This is a fully 3D printed direct drive steering wheel you can build at home for less than 100 euros. It provides up to 15 Nm of torque, magnetic paddle shifter and programmable buttons. With a premium looking design that's super easy to build without any fancy tools or equipment. Stick around if you want to see in details how to build it. First things first, uh, we need to 3D print all the components. I suggest printing them using PLA Plus with 4 walls and 20% infill for maximum strength. The wheel is designed around a hoverboard motor since they are extremely cheap if taken from a used hoverboard and allow for high torque of up to 15 Nm. With the components printed, we can see how the steering wheel is constructed around the motor with the two halves that get bolted together using two M5 bolts and a 3mm nail as the pivot axle. If the 3D printed parts can't slot nicely in the motor groove, you might need to loosen these eight bolts that hold the motor together to increase the clearance and tighten them back when the two halves are fitted. The front part of the wheel can be completed by screwing the two grips in place and pressing a 8-16mm button in the appropriate holes before moving on to assembling the paddle shifters. The shifters use a limit switch that triggers when the paddle gets pressed and a magnet to provide a super satisfying feedback. First, a couple of wires need to be soldered to the normally open and common terminals of the switch, which can then be dropped in place. Moving on to the paddle, we can see that it has a bunch of holes on its side in which some lengths of 3mm steel nails can be slotted into to provide a metal core that the magnet can track, allowing also to fine-tune the paddle feel by varying the number of them you insert. The puzzle can then be slotted in place using yet another nail as the pivot axle and the magnet can be pressed in place. This procedure can be copied to the other side before moving on to mounting the USB button board under the left paddle and connect all the wires. Wiring the buttons is probably the trickiest step in this build, but with some basic soldering skills you should be able to conquer it with no problem. One pin of each button can be wired in series with the others and connected to the board ground. Every other pin of each button needs to be connected to an input pin on the board in no particular order, since they will get mapped later in the software. To avoid interference, each of these pins must also be connected to 5 volts through a 10K resistor to pull up the signal to 5 volts when the button isn't pressed. One issue I discovered when I tested the wheel is that the motor windings interfered with the wire wrapping around the motor, making the signal quite unstable. That can be fixed by simply connecting the motor housing to 5 volts to shield the wires and the USB board from any interference. Before continuing, I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. If you don't have a 3D printer but still want to build this project, PCBWay is here to help you by providing low-cost, high-quality manufacturing services ranging from plastic and meta 3D printing to CNC machining and PCB making. They offer amazing prices and customer service with low turnaround times. Thanks again to PCBWay for supporting the channel and providing an amazing service. Check them out at the link below. Moving on with the build, we can screw the encoder pulley to the back of the steering wheel and slide this component on the motor axle, tightening it using two M6 bolts and nuts. At this point, the belt can be dropped in place and the encoder mounted to its bracket, using a zip tie to secure it firmly in place. To tension the belt, I've added an idler pulley to the encoder housing, so that by rotating the encoder on its mount, the idler will press against the belt and tension it. Moving on, we can add the component where the main controller will sit and screw it in place with three M6 bolts and nuts. The Maker Base X Drive Mini Controller is what I decided to use as the brain of this wheel, since I have already used it in my previous builds in conjunction with the FFBeast firmware, with amazing results and great customizability. This board can be screwed on its platform and the braking resistor added to the underside and connected to the board, making the wires pass through this cutout. We can also connect the motor wires, we will not need the whole sensor wires, so we can cut them off, while the phase wires can be connected in no particular order to the X-Drive Mini A, B and C pins. 
The encoder can also be wired up to the connector following this color scheme to complete the electrical part of this build. You'll also find a circuit diagram for these connections at the link below. Last thing on the list is to assemble the quick release base. For that, an 8mm threaded rod can be cut to 8.5cm and used to align these three components. This U-shaped structure will hold the main assembly using other two lengths of threaded rods, giving the ability to swivel the steering wheel up and down to find the perfect angle, after which the nuts can be tightened to secure everything in place. You might now be wondering how will this base be mounted to the desk or simulator frame, with also the ability to quickly remove it if needed. Well, as you can see there are two angled protrusions that will tightly slot in this base piece, and lock it in place thanks to the friction created by the shallow taper. This base plate has four M6 holes spaced following the Moza 40mm bolt pattern, so it can be screwed to any Moza wheel holder or directly to your desk, but you can also screw it to a piece of plywood and clamp it to your desk if you don't want to make holes in your tabletop. The tapered quick release works amazingly well, providing a super tight fit with absolutely zero wobble. Despite that, the friction fit alone isn't enough to ensure a safe and strong connection, so we've also added a lever that mechanically locks the two components together, making it literally impossible that they come apart unintentionally. Lastly, we can add the 24V 10A power supply to provide power to the simulator. I decided to screw mine to the underside of my desk close to the steering wheel, using an XT60 connector to connect it to the wheelbase. And there you have it, a direct drive 15Nm compact racing simulator, with a quick release and super satisfying magnetic paddle shifters. Comparing it to my latest simulator build, this one is superior in any way. It is smaller, way nicer looking and extremely easy to build, without the need to internally modify the motor and not needing a dedicated steering wheel, reducing cost and complexity. Comparing it to aftermarket wheels, the first that comes to mind is the Camus C5, which uses the same concept of integrating the motor in the steering wheel. Comparing the specs, we can immediately see the distinct superiority of this DIY wheel. The torque, 7 Nm versus 15, the paddle shifters, tiny spring loaded versus full size magnetic actuated. The price, 100 against 300 euros. Comparing it to something like the Logitech G29, it's not even worth it due to the DIY wheel being direct drive and having double the torque of the Logitech. Again, at less than half the price. On the racetrack, we can immediately see how detailed the feedback is with a strong power and immersive overall riding experience, which allows you to feel every crack and bump on the road, gathering great feedback from the car behavior. For more ride impressions, check out my latest force feedback wheel build, which uses the same components, just in a less refined and harder to build package. If you want to build this force feedback wheel yourself, you can find links to the 3D printable files, parts list with updated links to every single component needed, wiring diagram and a software setup guide at the link below. The files will be available on all the major 3D printing stores, at a price of just 15 euros, which reflects nicely the long work that went into designing and refining this project, with all the prototyping and developing. With the purchase you will directly support my work and the future project that will come to my channel. Just to mention some, I will for sure build a pedal set in the same style of this simulator, and probably even a rally style steering wheel, shifter and handbrake to allow for a different riding experience. But that's for another video, so subscribe if you don't want to miss any of my future builds, consider joining my Patreon and I will see you in the next one!